Week 14 is nearly in the books. Thanks for tuning in here to ProLine TV. Greg DePalma along with Jim Feist. As we wrap up week 14 in the NFL tonight, Monday Night Football, a game that really has little to no meeting. I guess the Bengals could uh, run the table and make things, I guess, interesting. They can get to nine and eight. They run the table. Anything's possible. But other than that, that's I, I will say this. Even though Atlanta's playing on next Monday night, Jim, and there are two Monday nights, that just gives us – because if you think if you look at it, next Monday night you'll have the two teams that played this week. We're going to get into that game, Atlanta and Minnesota. But they're not playing – it would have been better if they played next Monday night. Unfortunately, they're they're playing in different arenas, Minnesota at home, Atlanta on the road, and they're both playing bad football teams. So Monday night is going to be a bad night to watch football, uh, even though Sunday is going to be a – Sunday late in the day is going to be a very good day. It's such a good day, Jim, that it pisses me off to no end that they have all of the good games on at 4 o'clock. All at the same time. Where you all can't at the watch. same time. <laughs> I mean, I, come on. I, I mean, why? That doesn't. I, I understand the whole idea with if you want to put a, a marquee game at 4, if you want to put these games at 8 and all that other stuff, but what, what's the difference between 1 and 4 and why you're telling us that we have to watch crap at 1 o'clock and then we have to try to watch five games at once at four o'clock. I don't understand the idea with, uh, of that thinking. I just don't. Well, is it because they couldn't have anticipated uh, earlier that these would be good games? Because no, they scheduled- could change the times just like they do with the Sunday night game. They could flex yeah. the times easily. So I don't know what their reason is, but they suck. Uh, because if you look at it next week's uh, one o'clock games, I'm going to try to find a one o'clock game next week. I'm going to tell you what the best one o'clock game next week is. You ready? Yeah, there's ready. only one good one. That's it. And that's Miami at Houston. That's the only good. And that's, you know, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? That, it's that, like two, two okay that's, teams. That's, that's marginally good. Yeah. Yes. But at four o'clock, Pittsburgh, Philly. Excellent. Buffalo, Detroit. Excellent. Tampa Bay Chargers. Very nice good. Game. Very good. Uh, important game. Yes. Which is uh, another game that's also pretty important. Indianapolis, Denver, and yeah. and then the Sunday night game is is also very good. Uh, but thank goodness there's no competition, and that's Green Bay at Seattle. Correct. So, and what about um, the Monday night games? Who are? Oh they? yeah, the Monday night games are Minnesota hosting Chicago, and Atlanta at Las Vegas. We could pass on both of those, yeah. except except we won't, and we will have money on them, I'm sure. Maybe Atlanta can do the National Football League a favor and start Michael Penix. That will give that, a lot of people that, an opportunity to say, hey, I'll watch that game now. Well, you know, the way that Kirk Cousins is playing and the fact that he hasn't thrown a, thrown a touchdown pass since the uh, turn of the century um, – He has lost something. Not only did he have the Achilles issue in the offseason, there's something wrong with his shoulder. There has to be. Nobody's saying, though, but he just, he's not the guy. Yeah, no, he's old. Yeah, it's over for Kirk Cousins, even uh, before, even before, what is he, 36, 37? In that, in that range. Yeah. Yeah. And every, you know, everybody ages differently. They do. Everybody recovers from injuries differently. And, yep. you know, you can find an 80-year-old that's sharp and you can find a 60-year-old that, that isn't. It's, 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 everybody ages differently. Let's take a look at the standings. We're going to start in the AFC. Uh, let's start with, uh, i tell you what, uh, Dolphins and Jets had another typical Jet-Dolphin nutty <laughs> game. Uh, with the Jets and Aaron Rodgers playing their best offensive game of the season, and yet they yeah, Aaron, still found a way to lose. Aaron looked Aaron looked much better. He was way better than he has been. I'm going to be doing a video in the next 24, 48 hours. We're going to be posting it here on, on ProLine 
uh, regarding my feelings on who I believe uh, the Jets. Uh, I've already done one video on who I believe they should hire, but I've got another take basically on the whole Mike Vrabel deal. Uh, that I be, I'd really like to have Mike Vrabel as head coach, but only if he has a plan to hire a really good offensive coordinator. I am not interested in another defensive coach for the Jets unless they have an exciting plan at OC. Um, and I think that the Jets' best option is, and by the way, this draft is typical as Jet fans, that the Jets are going to have like a high pick and they need a quarterback, and this is like not a good quarterback class. None of these quarterbacks, That's true. I believe, should probably even be taken in the first round. These are all guys that are late first, second round guys that will be taken in the top 10 or 15 because everybody drafts quarterbacks. Um, but this is why I think it's very possible. See, the Jets are going to have to make a decision. Are they going to let Taylor, Tyrod Taylor, or Aaron Rodgers be the bridge gap to the quarterback they drafted this year? And you know, Because, again, they got to draft the quarterback, you would believe. So it is very possible that Aaron Rodgers stays for one year draft a quarterback and say, you're sitting for the year, kid. You're just not ready. We're not pushing you. We're not, we're not going to, we're not going to do anything to damage you. You're going to actually be smart because they're going to hopefully hire people that are going to be smart this time. And that's the way to go about it. The question is, is do they keep Rogers or Taylor? I would keep Taylor. Uh, I think, I think that Rogers doesn't want to work hard to, to be a winning quarterback. The problem is you need a good GM the owner Absolutely. Is and that's what my video is going to be about, is about who they're yeah. going to hire to run the team. And then, of course, your owner is a problem. And well, they're not going away. And so. you need a defensive coordinator and you need offensive coordinator. You know, you talk about court, which we spend too much time talking about quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks in decades. He's, he's really good. But if you, I mean, watch them play. They have zero protection for him. Zero. He is getting murdered. And and we we spend too much time and too much money on quarterbacks and not enough on the support system around them. I'm sorry. And well, until that changes, and that, well, that's because it doesn't sell. It doesn't sell tickets. Nobody. I don't nobody care. Cares. But it wins. Ga it wins games. It nobody does. Wants, nobody wants to watch these teams that can't win. And that's why yeah, you're right. That's why the Detroit Lions have done such a great job because yeah. they had, they understand it starts at the line of scrimmage. They have built themselves the best offensive line of football. Be, believe me, the can't, the pendulum always swings. Three years ago, everybody says running backs, forget them, don't pay them. They yeah, look at look at what the the teams with the best running backs right now are doing pretty yep. damn good. They're back. The, this nonsense that the media gets into and everybody believes them. And it's not just sports; it's on every every level. It, it's garbage. We need a good offensive line. You need a good running Absolutely. back, and you need you don't need a good a, coaching. You don't need an A quarterback to win. You need a B quarterback or a B plus quarterback. You don't need an A quarterback. What you need is an offensive line, good running game, and good defense. And a B quarterback will win you the Super Bowl. And excellent coaching. It's, oh, and, that, and that's the thing. Without, yeah. without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. And that's, uh, yeah, that, that's why, and again, that's why, that's what my videos, and that's all I've been preaching to Jet fans on my shows for the last uh, several weeks, last month or two, is about the coaching staff and building the foundation and hoping that the owner gets the higher right. And, I, and, and I'm also talking about, uh, on this video, about going ahead, and I can't even believe, I think I mentioned this last week, going ahead and look, Hire hire this uh, Donna Ponte. I can't believe I'm going to be okay with hiring a female like president of football ops or even general manager, but I am because I've seen her background. She looks like that that sh she's okay. I mean, hey, it hasn't worked with men, so why do I <laughs> care what her what her uh, uh, you know a, a gender is? Um, so yeah, the, so that's where it starts the, at the top. I mean, the gen gender the, if they understand. If it doesn't matter if it's a female or a male, it just has to be somebody that's smart and understands yeah. the game. And I mean, it's ridiculous. The gender doesn't make any difference whatsoever at that level. You're not putting them on the field to run the no. clock and tackle for God's no. sake. Yeah. It's, so it's about um, using your brain. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but anyway, that was a really uh, big game for Miami because they came back and won the game in overtime. And boy, did they need that because they were down. 
Uh, they got the late field goal. They get the coin toss. They score the touchdown. They win, they win the game. They lose that game. It's over. They're done. The, the, the season's over. So they have salvaged uh, at least another week. And now they get a chance because even because this Houston game is a game that chances are now that they've lost to Green Bay, they've got to beat Houston now. They, they pretty much got to run the table. Um, and uh, that's going to be a big game we'll talk about next week. I've already interviewed uh, uh, insiders for both teams. Right now they're posted on the Arles football channel. And, and we're going to take about a 10 minute clip from my interview with Cole Thompson. Uh, who is a, a Houston insider? Does a great job. One of these, one of these guys that you just ask him one question, they'll talk for ten or fifteen minutes and give you a wealth of information. So it makes my job easy when I interview him. So we're gonna have about ten minutes to talk about the Houston Miami game. That'll be available right here only on Proline TV. We'll be posting it in the next 24, 48 hours. So uh, Bills, meanwhile, go to LA and and oh, by the way, we're gonna have a new segment. <clears throat> on our Wednesday show playbook uh, against uh, ATS podcast. And uh, so the, it's going to be, I'm going to let everybody know, I'm going to email them. I'm going to email all our top handicappers because everyone's a top handicapper on playbook ATS. And I'm going to say, okay, each week I'm going to start the show, or at least when I'm hosting and it's up to Mark, if he wants to do it, but, and I'm going to say, okay, give me a, what was your, what was your best and worst of this past week? In other words, give me your best pick uh, and your worst pick or, you know, your best game, whatever. And so this one, um, and, and again, it doesn't have to be one where where it's just like worse, like, oh, you were stupid or it was just terrible, but something that like let you down. And the Bills were my letdown. Um, and and you were right on against uh, with the LA Rams uh, winning this football game. Uh, and it was one of those games where you just, you, when you're watching it, you're realizing – something's not right with the Buffalo Bills because they can't stop the Rams. And it's not like the Rams have been like the two years ago Rams. I mean, the Rams are marching up and down the field against the Bills, who are one of the best teams in the NFL, one of the best defenses in the NFL. And I think it's exactly from what you said, Jim, right here. They weren't in it. They just weren't. There's no other explanation. I mean, well, they did. They did wake up in the second half and Josh Allen is just an incredible player when he, when they're, and they got motivated late, and the 44-42, I, I mean, I, I had one really – I'm going to give you a stat. Halftime yardage, 314 yards for one team and two for the other. Can you name the game? Rams and Bills. <laughs> no. <laughs> 314 no. yards of what, total yards? In the first half, yes. To two. To two. Of this past week. Yes, uh, let's see. I guess it should be easy. Let me see. <laughs> Nothing's easy. <laughs> well, 342 to 342 usually rules out a whole bunch of teams. So let me see. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say the Giants, but I can't. I don't think New Orleans could put up over 300 yards of offense and a half. But uh, oh, here, how about this one? San Francisco and the Bears. Absolutely. There you go. And I, oh and, I, and I hit that one oh. because I, as soon as I saw the uh, Bears there, it clicked. Your worst of the week, the Chicago. Oh Bears. gosh, that was that was horrible. Oh my god, I mean, whew. you wish you, you you actually wanted to throw something at the TV or just go out to lunch or something. It, it was that was unbelievable. Two yards. Two. You know, I, you know, the fun the, the thing is, we, we say this a lot, and that this is a perfect game to reference. Whenever we talk about uh, games where we say things like, well, at least we know the team is going to give it their all, 100%. We know it matters to them. We know this is a game that we're not going to be guessing. And this is why. Because this is one of those games where, all right, you put all your math and your stats and your, and your analysis, and it just goes out the window – because it's obvious that Chicago Bears wanted nothing to do with this football game. Nothing. You, you know, and we were last week we were talking about put a fork in the Niners. They're done. They got everybody's injured. They don't, you know, they're out of it. They're not out of it. Not anymore. They're not, <laughs> not, with, not with the Cardinals going down. Now you got Seattle, you got the Rams, and you got and you got an outside shot with this Niner team. If they if they can put a run together, they're still in it. Well, take a look at the NFC playoff picture. And we have two teams now that are in 
Detroit and Philly, big surprise. So they have Seattle. We'll talk about that game in a sec. You got Seattle, Tampa Bay, baby. The Bucks, first place. Uh, in the I'm, tell, I'm going to tell you something. Baker Mayfield. Ba- Baker is, I, he's a little bit, he banged up too. I mean, it's every, everybody's banged up, I guess, but God, he plays hard. Jeez, he plays hard. He takes punishment. He just keeps going. It's like the old Timex watch commercial. If everybody can remember them, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. If he just keeps going. Hundred to one. Excuse me. Couldn't understand you. Baker Mayfield's odds for league MVP are a hundred to one. Right now, uh, yeah. Josh Allen, and we all know Josh yeah. Allen's playing great and all. But Josh Allen is minus 400. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. He's, I'm sorry, but Josh Allen's a great quarterback, but I'm, I'm sorry. I, I've seen him play like this every year. What, what's the specialness of this year? I, I don't get well, it. Well, Barkley's 4-1 to one he, next. Well, you're not going to – it's going to be a quarterback that gets it most likely. It always is. Josh Allen is playing out of his mind. He really is. Well, yeah, but again, look, he, he always plays out of his mind. I mean, he just you, does. you would have to, you got to look at Jared Goff as a potential. I mean, yeah, he's 10 to 1. He's the he's, next quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's having a hell of a year. And by the way, those two teams play each other this week. Yeah, it's going to be a huge game. And uh, unfortunately, it's uh, also, it's going to be one of those four o'clock days where I'm going to be, I'll have to watch like 30 minutes of each game at a time. <laughs> All right, I got through Buffalo and Detroit 30 minutes. Now I got to start the next one. And I got to do that because I can't I, I can't get screwed while I'm watching one game like in the third quarter and have the NFL update and they show me the score of the other game. And, you know, you know, I mean, today's day and age, there should be like a, a, a an option on your video that says whether or not you want other score updates or whether or not you want, you know, the, the, the crew to come in and, and inter- interrupt you with an update. Because I think we're at that time now where, like, you know, come on. I mean, we want to watch every game if we can. And I don't want to know the score of these games. I want to watch the game like I have no idea what's going on. I don't want to be screwed around. But anyway. No, that's uh, why That's why I have five TVs and I have them all on at the same time. But you can't really focus. Yeah. But the but that's, that's what happens on Monday and Tuesday. I go back and watch these individually. You know, because yep. I'm an in, I'm an in game live game better. Yeah, so, that's that's the thing. So that's the I thing. have yeah. to have them all up there to have some idea of what's going on. However, you really don't get the full focus if your if your your attention is spread all over the place. So that's why Monday and Tuesday is watching the games again. What do you do? You watch them on the replay on, on the thirty minute compacted deals. I, I you know the red zone. Is, is, is very oh, you good. watch the red zone? Okay. I have the I have the red zone, and then I have three other TVs that are on individual. I mean, games. when you watch them all over again, do you watch well, it watching, over again I'm, on I'm, the thirty I'm minute watching, condensed version? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, you skip all you skip all the nonsense. Yeah, in between. that's awesome. That's the way to yes. do it. Yeah. yeah. I used to when that first came out, and I had that. I would like Sunday morning. I mean Monday morning. Uh, I'd, I'd be, you know, whatever, nine, 10 o'clock, boom, for like three, four hours. That's it. I watch every game, all 30 minutes, every play until I've watched everything that I didn't watch. Uh, and that's an awesome way to watch it. Okay. So there you go. Uh, they got the uh, Vikings and then the Packers, even though they well, lost. Let's look, at what, let's look at what the Niners potential is. Yeah. Well, that's what we're doing. And then yep. Washington's eight and five. So again, the six, top six teams are in no, no chasing them. Uh, again, except Tempe, Atlanta, and the South. So then you've got Washington is the vulnerable team at eight and five. So the Rams are a game back. Uh, Atlanta, two back. Arizona and San Francisco, two back. So three teams, Falcons, Cardinals, and 49ers are two behind Washington. So that's uh, there's only five well, left, I believe. Well, at, 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 uh, the Niners play the Rams this week. That is a – yeah. That, I mean, they are going head to head, so that's big. Yeah, that'll eliminate the Niners if they lose. And to tell you the truth, beating Chicago is one thing, but the way the Rams <laughs> played on Sunday, San Francisco—if all those guys like are still out, 
like Trent Williams, th- those it'll guys, be, it'll, it'll they're be not going to the Rams. It'll be a different game. That's sure. right. It'll be different. Uh, so, yeah, so that would be big for the Rams. And, look, after the way the Rams played and after the way the Cardinals are looking now, it does look like the Rams are the one team. They're only a game behind Washington. It looks like they've got the best chance, the easiest chance. And, uh, boy, Washington's got some work in, in front of them. They do. They're, I, Washington's a seven, seven half point favorite this week. So, ah, oh, you're starting to tell me lines again. Don't tell me well, lines. Somebody, I'm sorry, but that's part of what we're doing. Who are here. they? Well, I'm going <laughs> to guess them first. Who are they playing? No, I'm not going to tell you. Washington. Because, because oh, I have my you, list here. You you yell at me when I tell you things. I do. <laughs> oh, that's right. They're playing the Saints without the Derek Carr. Yeah. Right. That's right. uh, that's not looking good. Imagine, see, I know everybody's talking about whether the Saints, that you know, whether that Rizzi should should be a candidate for the job. First of all, hell no. Second of all, uh, the reason I say hell no is one, the I just interim coaches they they don't ever. First of all, they hardly ever get the job, and I believe that's the that that's the way it should be because it's not equal. They didn't start with the team. They didn't go through the training camp. They didn't go. They just picked up, you know, at some point during the season when there's emotions running high and it's not a good gauge on whether a guy's a head coach. But Darren Rizzi, I don't know if you've noticed this guy or not, but he's a nutcase on the sidelines. And people think, oh, that's really <laughs> nice and cool. But that would wear thin really fast. Well, Dan Somebody, Campbell's a nutcase on the sidelines. He's doing oh, pretty it, damn good. But at least Dan Campbell looks like he's like like at times it looks like he's professional. This guy is like constantly let me like. Ask, let me ask you this question: There's 32 teams. Name me 32 guys that should be head coaches. I'm, you can't do it. Well, because I mean, we don't know. We don't know because they don't have experience, and we well, don't well, know until yeah, well, we again, really I, don't. We really don't know until they fail. And they I mean look at. Belichick, he was at Cleveland, remember, and got fired. And, you know, so until he got to the New England. Well, that's typical and, for the Browns, isn't and, it? They let, well, they let then, Bill then Belichick found, go. Found, they let Baker found, Mayfield but, go. Well, that's, yes, it is normal. But then he got there and he found this guy named Tom Brady. Yeah, that's it. And so when Tom Brady leaves, Belichick couldn't win a game. But yeah, but Brady if Darren went, Rizzi was the head coach for Patrick Mahomes. He ain't winning uh, two Super Bowls back to back. It ain't happening. <laughs> well, there's not there's there's a lot of teams that will never win a Super Bowl. And some of it's because of their owners like Jerry Jones and Woody Johnson and you know, these guys are never winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Woody Johnson's not selling the team, so they'll win a Super Bowl. You just got to hire the right people. See, that's that's like what we're seeing in Detroit right now. They have absolutely no foundation for ever, ever. And finally, they got it right. They finally got it right. And uh, that's what you got to do. You know, and it starts with that very first hire. You, know, you got to hire that very top guy uh, or girl that makes the right decisions because it all starts at the top. And I was going through all the owners and the top uh, decision makers for my video because obviously I'm going to do the video and I want to start comparing why I believe the Jets have had so many problems, why Woody has had many problems. I don't think it's because necessarily of Woody, because he's not like a Jeff Jones instigator. The problem is, is that when you take a look at his hires of people who have run the organization, that there's no like great resume with these guys. It's like guys that he hired that were really good in business. And so he put them to run the Jets as a business. And so they go out and they, that's like, who, who hires like a firm, like the Mike Tannenbaum firm, to help you find competent people to run your organization? Well, people who don't have people on your organization to, that knows how to do that. So I'm, I'm happy he's doing that because that means he's smart enough to know I got to bring some football minds in here. But that's the problem. Um, with some of these organizations is they, they don't, there's a lot of guys that just, or, or again, they don't have the right people running their uh, organizations. Well, green Bay doesn't even have an owner. No, they don't. They got, a, they got a bunch of stockholders. And that's why the first guy has got to be someone like, for instance, the guy who for the Packers, I even have it here. The guy, how the Packers have done it 
uh, is so they're in a situation where at least if you look at it, um, they have uh, uh, a, a, a somebody who's you know in charge. Uh, who you would say somebody like um, you know I, I get I think it's probably their I don't know who's who's running I don't know if it's a football well, they position. Do, they do have a general manager. I can't think of his name, but they oh yeah. To- Oh yeah, they do. Uh, it's it's Gutenkoost or whatever his name is. But they Correct. also have someone. I think it was Mark Murphy. Remember, Mark Murphy was on that was in that organization for like twenty years, and he was a guy that had experience in again football experience. So that's the thing you have to have. So if you're if you're an organization like the Packers, the reason why they they've so, they've been so successful is they've had somebody there for as long as they've had them. And it's not like the Packers. I remember when I was growing up, when I was a kid going to Shea Stadium as a Jet fan, Packers weren't a good football team. Those were the days of Lynn Dickey. Those, hmm. those were not good Green Bay Packer teams. So, but you have to start somewhere. And, and the Packers did at that point. And they finally found the right people to run the organization. And luckily, for their sake, the, the, those guys were there for a long time. Uh, who was the other the guys that was there that, for a long time? I forget the guy's name. Uh, he had Mark Murphy and he had someone else that was there and they were there for a very long time together. Um, so there's four games left and Washington after new Orleans hosts Philadelphia and Atlanta. So that Philly game. Wow. Well, I, I got, I got to think Washington wins two of the next three games. I would agree with that. And their last games at Dallas. And That's, they just lost to Dallas. Yeah. Um, really, but I'm still, I mean, I'm just, still thinking it, three out of four, right? It's, it's, it's Dallas is, is questionable because they, they are on a roll right now with two straight wins, even though they're against bad teams. Um, everybody's playing for their jobs. Nobody's yeah. tanking it, it, it on, on, the, on that team. No. Nope. Um, so it's a, it's a dangerous situation. Uh, for them. I mean, Washington is a young team with a young quarterback and a brand new coaching staff, although they have history. Um, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, try to venture out there and say they're going to beat Dallas. It's impossible. Dallas. Yeah. Washington. But I I do, I do give them two out of the next three. Well, here's the deal is that Washington after playing, I mean, the Rams after playing San Francisco, they get they get a win the following week. They get back to back road wins. So let's say they win this week at Saint San Francisco, then win the following week because they play the Jets on the road. So those are two wins, and then their last two games were at home against Arizona and Seattle. So the Arizona well, game, well, they're they're big games. Yeah. yeah so let's say let, let's say Arizona, let's say LA is going to be favored in the next two games. But then again, the Jet game, you don't know who's going to be favored with the odds makers with the Jets at home. But let's just say we 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 believe the Rams should beat the Jets no matter what the point spread is, and and the Niners. So that puts them in a position where chances are they could be tied with Washington because Washington, let's say they lose to Philly, now they're tied. Now, after the next two games, Washington, the Rams are tied. So now you have the Rams hosting Arizona. And, they, and, and that can go either way, depending on if Arizona could, you know, kind of get back to getting on the win column, where Washington will host Atlanta, which at this point also Atlanta would need to turn things around like Arizona. I that think, doesn't I happen. Think, I think Atlanta's done. They're, they're going to probably have to go to the rookie quarterback, and he has no experience, and they, have no, they still don't have a passing – a uh, pass rush. So I, I would say Atlanta is, is probably done. So then that would, so let's say they, they, they both win and now they're both tied. And look, I don't know what the, what the current uh, tiebreaker is. I guess we'd have to take a look at their NFC records first and all that other stuff. But if their final game of the season, the Rams would be hosting Seattle and uh, Washington would be at Dallas. So now you get into a situation where at least the Rams are at home. Washington would be feeling the pressure for sure because they're they got a young quarterback, a rookie quarterback. They're on the road. You know, the Dallas Cowboys are going to try to beat them. And just like they did the, the couple weeks ago, it's their main rival. So that's going to be uh, interesting if it comes it's down a, to it's Washington. A, it's a difficult thing to handicap a rookie quarterback in this kind of pressure situation. A, they don't usually play, you know, college kids don't play this many games. 
and then B, you're putting them in a pressure pack situation. Um, that that's that's a hard one, especially you're going, when you're going up against the veteran. All right, AFC. And by the way, let's wrap up the NFC though, because uh, Seattle had to win over Arizona. Boy, they just they just smoked them. I mean, once again, and, and once again, not- my 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 uh, my handicapping theory of always take the team that dominates the other team and including this year, and then you're going to go ahead and make them the underdog in the series. And it's just, I'm sorry, it happens. Uh, it works like 80, 90% of the time. And well, that's pretty, that's pretty high. Seattle won the, again. The, the, you know, the world, <laughs> it's crazy. The world is on the Cardinals. The world is on the Jets. I mean, the, you talk about the Sharps against the, the Joes against the, you know, the, the, the Sharps, uh, the pros against the Joes, the pros don't, they haven't been doing all that well. I mean, I don't understand why they keep betting the Jets. I mean, yeah, they played better yesterday, but they've been all over the Jets all year long, and it makes no sense to me at all. Yeah, that went, and actually in this one, I think, did they push or cover? They went uh, – uh, Probably depended on who think, you went with, right? I think they might have covered that one. Okay. So yeah. it's probably six and a half, probably. Yeah, yeah. They covered it. So uh so anyway, so Seattle now, four or no since the buy, four straight upset wins. How about that? So Seattle now uh will will be home against Green Bay. Okay, so I'll I'll predict this line now. So will Seattle fifth straight dog at home on Sunday night against the Green Bay Packers? I am going to say they Oh, that's a tough one. I'm going to say that I'm going to say either way is going to be one or something. So I'll just say, boy, will they? I'll say Green Bay one. I'm going to have to look this up here. Hold on a second. Why am I not finding? Oh, there it is. Uh, Green Bay is three. Wow. Three. Disrespect. Te- Disrespecting te- the Seahawks I'm, again. I'm, I'm telling you right now, that is a, a very bad line. So you agreed with me it should be more like pick them or a, something? That is that is a very – there is – unless there's an injury in there that I don't know about, and that – believe me, that's No, possible. there's not. There's not. I mean, I, Kenneth Walker that, sat that last is, week, and it didn't is, matter. That is a terrible, terrible line. Terrible. Yeah, I, don't, I don't understand that one either. I, I mean – Don't you think that's, don't you that, that's that, name recognition of the Packers? I, I don't care. I don't care who wins the game. The, that line should not be three. I mean, is that no is way. that what you think it is though? It's that hey, it's the Green Bay Packers, and you know they they've been like the they're uh, the team that uh, went to the playoffs last year. Well, and... they just, I don't I don't know what it is. It's that's total disrespect. I mean, this yeah. is a Sunday night isolated game. Green Bay three at the Seahawks. No way, God yeah. no. That should be one, maybe one either side. Yeah. If you, if you really not three, you can't. That's terrible number. That's horrible. That, and obviously that's good for Seattle because they've just won four straight as an up as a dog. So and and I know historically, just by remembering their trends the last few years, Seattle is just not very good as a home favorite. Um, do you really trust Jordan Love that much on the road? No. He's been careless. He throws the ball around. I mean, they played a good game mm-hmm. against Detroit, yes. Uh but I don't see it. That's that's a horrible line. Horrible. Yeah, you know, Detroit played that game on Thursday with Green Bay. And the way they're playing right now, it's so similar to like how the Chiefs are playing, where it just doesn't matter. They'll find a way to win. They'll just win. Doesn't yeah, matter. That, that, that bubble's going to break. That, that's the, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I watched that game last night. I watched all the games, of course. Kansas City is not going to make the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. Uh, well, again, I know remember, this is they're going to get they're healthier. Not, they're, they're not getting there. They're not getting no. there. They have their offensive line is horrendous. Bringing well, you got to give them more than a week. Humphreys, Humphrey, yeah, but he got hurt again. Humphreys came back at left tackle. He's hurt again. You know, and, and that's it. Yeah, that's just, true. You cannot play football. They 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 could have five losses. If you go back to their games, they could have five losses. They only have one, but they could have five. 
It's amazing. It's like the no, exact just, opposite you of the well Jets. The crap, you might as well go to the crap table and play craps. I mean, that's how lucky they are. Because I, I, I made sure I saved this. Because, again, this is the exact opposite of the Jets season. Get this. There were six games in which the Jets had the ball late in the fourth quarter with a chance to win. They lost all six. They've lost three consecutive games in which they went into the fourth quarter with the lead. It was 23-15 on Sunday. And they've lost five games this season in which they held the lead in the fourth quarter. A team record. That is the exact opposite of what's going on with the with the Kansas City Chiefs and the Detroit Lions. Uh, they just they just win. They know how to win, they win. And it's players, coaches, but coaches have a lot to do with it. The foundation oh, of Detroit's tremendous, there. Tremendous amount of, to do with it. I mean, you, not everybody has Patrick Mahomes, of course, and not everybody has Andy Reid or Spagnuolo. No. Yep. But I mean, I was I was extremely impressed with the Chargers, e- even though they had some offensive players out. I thought they played very well in a very yep. difficult situation. And of course, they have a head, good head coach too, and they have a good quarterback, and they have other good talent on the team. But that's a good team. That's a very good team. And, and do you want to know what the Chargers Super Bowl futures are right now? I would love to know. 40 to 1. Well, they That's got a lot bad. to over They have a lot to overcome to get there. Well, <laughs> I mean, really they they'll get their guys back. These guys aren't gone for the year. They'll get McConkey back. They're going to get uh, their running back back. So they're going to be as healthy as they're going to be. They just nearly beat the Chiefs, the best team. And the Bills just continue to prove that they're vulnerable. They're not the Chiefs. So, yeah, I think, I think, and again, we're not talking 10 to 1. We're talking 40 to 1. So, I mean, if you're $50, put $50 on them. I mean, why not? You know, why so, not? Why Absolutely. Not? Um, Tampa Bay. Although, once again, although I, will, I will tell you the better way to bet it. Is just make make a bet on each game money line for them, <laughs> and roll it. That usually pays off better. Uh, well, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have to, to, I'd, do the I'd, math, have to but... I'd have to I'd have to calculate it, but because forty and their schedule a, too. I have to see what the forty to one is a, a very big number. It is but, big, but very big. Uh, Tampa Bay, once again, uh, a little bit closer than they would like, but that's the Bucs. I mean, the Bucs do not, unfortunately, have, if you're a Tampa Bay fan, unfortunately, uh, you know, because of a few injuries, key injuries, but really, it's there's just not a, a complete team yet. They, they, they have at least one more offseason where they've got to make some uh, additions uh, to be a more complete team. But uh, Baker Mayfield just wills this team. That's why I think – see, that's why these awards – we, we all know how easy it is. You can, oh, yeah, Josh Allen. Well, you can give it to Josh Allen any year you want. You can give it to Patrick Mahomes any year. But that should not be the MVP designation. It should be for people like Baker Mayfield. It is amazing what the kid has done for this franchise. And they don't have a whole lot of talent. Uh, you know, they've got just enough. And he just does so many things. And anyway, it was a struggle. But they got it done. And we, we, we talked about this for the past several weeks that this was when the Bucks needed to take advantage of the schedule, and it worked to a T. They won both of the games that they should have. The, the Falcons lost both of the games they should have. And now Tampa Bay is ahead of Atlanta in the South and taking a look at the uh, schedule. We just talked about a big one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be interviewing the insiders uh, for Tampa Bay and the Chargers this week. And then you and Mark uh, will have our uh, our talk uh, at some point, probably Thursday or Friday. We'll probably do this. It might be Friday, but we're going to go ahead and 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 we're going to put together um, a, a a video where all I'm going to do is ask Mark and, and Jim for their take on the Bucks and the Chargers. I'm going to edit the two interviews uh, with the previews and with uh, Mark's uh, and and Jim's opinion on the game. Make one nice video. That'll be avail- available for you guys here on ProLine TV before the weekend. So look out for that. Uh, but that is a big one for the Bucks and the Chargers. 
that's coming up really more for the Bucks because we know the Chargers are going to make the playoffs, but the Bucks have got to now stay ahead of Atlanta because again, Atlanta holds the tiebreaker. Uh, after this, it gets a lot easier for Tampa Bay. Their final three games of the season are against teams that are not going to the postseason. They play at Dallas, and then the last two are at home, Carolina and the Saints. Uh, again, none of them are gimmies, especially Carolina and maybe even Car Dallas Car on the road. Carolina's, Carolina's looking very dangerous right now. Um, Bryce Young has really had a resurgence. I mean, That's he, awesome, he, isn't it? He's, he's, awesome. Been he's been reborn. They're ready to send him back to wherever he's from. Yep. I mean, he is playing so much better. Yeah, it's and, too bad, oh like God. you said, that that kid, uh, kid dropped the ball. Leggett, he's a rookie, <laughs> but this is the problem with him as a rookie. You know, he's, 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 he's not, you, he doesn't have the greatest how hands. Liked, how would you have liked to have been the guy that bet the $3.1 million on Philadelphia win the game, watching that pass almost? <laughs> I mean, my God, you talk about stress. Matter of fact, oh. you needed the, 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 the replay just to feel like he did drop it because what if the replay would have shown that he caught it? So, wow. It was, that was wild. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're right. And again, that's what we talked about last week when we went over the Carolina game and the big spread that, Hey, this just didn't look like the type of team Carolina that was going to need the backdoor cover. This was the team that's playing so good that they should be there throughout the entire game. And that's exactly what they did. They were there the whole game with the Eagles. Now you can say what you want about the Eagles in the sandwich game, and I'm okay with that. But the fact is, is that Carolina has just been playing awesome right now, and that's great to see. Very true. Uh, Minnesota, they just keep winning. Again, they're another franchise this season that just knows how to win. You know, they. I, just, bet, I mean, all, the Jets. The confident. Jets. The Jets have to be really happy they got rid of Darnold and 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 went the direction. I mean, they have to be super happy. Well, again, <laughs> Sam Darnold is doing this. Because of the fact that at, 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 at the perfect time of his career, of course, but I mean, you, you put in a great situation and this is what every quarterback needs is to be put in a situation where you get Justin Jefferson, you know, you got an organization that is winning and, uh, and, and, and he's been okay, like early in the season, but now his confidence has just been through oh. the roof. So unbelievable. It, it really, it's, it's a different human being. Yeah. Yeah. Now I worry about the team that gives them a big contract. I hope they have weapons. Do not sign Sam Darnold unless you have weapons. Because if you sign Sam Darnold and hope you're like, okay, we're going to bring our savior in here. He's not that guy. I'm sorry. I just don't think he's the guy. He, you yeah, have I, to have weapons. Maybe they, maybe they should keep him and, and give him <laughs> McCarthy. You know, I mean, that is interesting. Yeah, I mean, he would not even be playing if McCarthy didn't get hurt. No, he wouldn't. Of course, we don't know. McCarthy might have fallen apart. You know, we don't know. Uh, and there you got the Packers and the Commanders. All right, so let's go to the AFC. And, of course, the same teams up there have already uh, clinched. So the Steelers and the Browns. So talk about best of the week. Well, here you go, baby. The Pittsburgh Steelers, once again, uh, the trend continues the Steelers and the Browns, the home team dominates straight up and against the spread in this series in the regular season. And so it happened a few weeks ago in Cleveland and it happened here in Pittsburgh. Little nervous early on when Cleveland took that lead, but Pittsburgh uh, just did what they do and uh, they played another solid game and Cleveland just overmatched. Looks like Cleveland might, uh, they're thinking about going to the kid, I can't remember his name, DTR. Yes. Uh, to see what they have with him because, you know, Jameis isn't their future. Although, you know, he is, he's in, he's entertaining one. I mean, he's going to score for both teams. I mean, that's, that's one thing he's going to do. He's very exciting in that respect. Texans have that big game with uh, Miami coming up at Texans at this point. Uh, we all know that they're going to win this division. So uh, it's really about just trying to see, uh, yeah, and right now it's, it's probably too late for them to catch the, any of these teams. So it's uh, they're probably locked in to that four I, spot. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And then you got the Ravens, and the Ravens uh, are going to uh, – they're coming off a bye, the Ravens. Who the, Ravens the Giants. Oh, big, my big, Lord. Big what favorite. Ugly game that's going to be. And you watch <laughs> that Giant game? You watch the end of that game? 
I, well, I have not yet. No. Okay. So it's like New Orleans is winning the game. It's 14 3 the whole time. And then, and then the Giants finally put a drive together and score a touchdown and a two point conversion. Just like that. Once again, remember we talked about it last week about the, uh, what was it, uh, Mark uh, on the uh, newsletter? I don't know what you're doing without Mark's weekly newsletter, but it had the incredible, I think it was the incredible stat of the week that had uh, you, you bet against this team based on this stats and, and, and if you do, they're 12 one and one against the spread. If you go against the other team this week, it was the Giants picking the Giants over the Saints. And, did it uh, again. They did, did it again. again. So now it's 13 one and one under that scenario. Uh, but yeah, so, so now the Giants have covered the spread, but they actually, because Carr's injury, now they're actually getting the ball back and they're able to march down the field all the way down to like the 10 yard line. And they have four opportunities, or three opportunities to win the game can't do it on a touchdown and they get the field goal blocked. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a long field goal. It was like a, it was under 40 yards and they got it blocked. So that's the giants and uh, the Ravens should have no problem with them this week. Uh, chargers, uh, of course they're, they're They're behind the Ravens uh, because they lost to the Ravens. So I don't really think that um, they're going to probably uh, pass them. So the Chargers look like they're cemented into that six spot. Uh, more than likely. Uh, yeah, with, with, with their coaching staff and, and probably getting some of those players back, they're very, that's a very, very good team that's ready to, to one. I mean, with, with Jim Harbaugh there, I mean, that's if I don't know what they're going to do in the offseason, but you know they're going to improve. Oh, yeah. Under him, and that's going to be a very, that's probably the winner of that division next year. They're going to get a, there's a great tight end class. They're going to get one of those guys and uh, they're going to get some more weapons on offense. That's for sure. And then there's Denver and the Broncos. That's another dangerous team right there. The Broncos, that yeah. team with a rookie quarterback has been eight and five already. I mean, they are, they are looking good. And this, there's a resurgence of some of these clubs, the Broncos and the chargers next year in that division are going to be really hard to beat. And you have the Colts that are sitting at two behind Denver. The Dolphins are also two behind Denver. So uh, those are the two teams. And, and keep in mind, again, Denver will be playing the Colts this week. So huge, this is it for the Colts. And the, Dolphins are going to be play, and the Dolphins are going to be playing the Chargers. Those, those games are big, 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 big. Uh, no, they're not. Dolphins yeah, they, play the Chargers. Oh, the Dolphins, oh, the Dolphins are playing the Texans. Yeah, That's Dolphins play the Texans. And right. but Denver, <clears throat> Denver, after they host Indianapolis, they go to play the Chargers. So uh, these are not, and then they're at Cincinnati. And then the final game, unless the Bills somehow, it's too late. But unless the Bills get back into tying the Chiefs and make the Chiefs having to win this game, Denver will be hosting the Chiefs in the final game, which is going to be a gimme for ten for Denver. So these teams know that, so they know that they're going to have to they're going to have to figure out a way to get ahead of the the, the, the Broncos mathematically if they tie them, or else they're they're screwed in that game. Uh, but those are three really tough games that Denver's got coming up because again the Colts are playing for their season this week. Uh, the Chargers on the road and the Bengals on the road. And no matter what happens to the Bengals, you know the Bengals are, are still going to go out there and try to score 50 points. So it'll be an exciting I mean, game. If, if those offensive players come to play, you're not going to slow them down. No. They're, they're impossible to stop. So but, those are some tough games. That's about the toughest schedule that I've seen of all of these bubble teams, Denver. Denver seems to have the toughest schedule, and they do have a rookie quarterback. So – it really starts this week. I mean, they're at home. If they lose this week to the Colts and open that door, and if Miami wins, they're not uh, going to lose. They're not going to lose this week to the Colts. Uh, let's see. Point spread should be what are we saying? About seven, six, four. That's it. Yep. To the Colts. Yep. All right. Well, I'll take Denver. The thing is. No, and we can't predict this now. The Colts are an indoor team with a very inexperienced quarterback as well as Denver. Oh, yeah. 
but Nix is better than Richardson. Yep. And Denver's home, used to the climate, used to the conditions. If you remember, they're at Mile High Stadium. That's not easy. And the Colts are coming from indoors to outdoors. Not a good scenario, usually. By the way, did they change the uh, they changed the stadium? Is because I think they don't they don't call it Mile High anymore. Unfortunately, I know we do. I I still call it Mile High because they're still Mile High. Uh, but I think they changed the stadium, didn't they? I, I do not. Remember. I don't. Know anyway, that. let's take a look at the weather. Sunday, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's really it's too warm. Soon. The weather in Denver is not like warm. every five every five minutes it changes. No, I mean, but the whole six day forecast is all low fifties. So it doesn't look like there's going to be much going there in Denver, unfortunately. I guess it's not the time. It's snowing today, but like you said, in a couple of days it snows one day, in a couple of days it's 55 degrees. It's, it's it, Colorado has some really crazy weather. I, I spent a lot of time in Colorado and it's it's nuts. <laughs> they, every, uh, 15, every, every 15 minutes it changes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about moving there. Uh, they are three and zero. A great state. I like. You have to give me some uh, uh, some um, advice on where to move to. Uh, Denver has won <laughs> their last three straight up and against the spread before the bye. So, and they won every game by nine or more. So now we'll find. And they were favorites in all those. So favorite role has not been an issue for the Denver Broncos at home this week against the Colts. And I think that's, uh, that's about it. Again, Bengals only chance. They're going to have to run the table, win every game. And even then probably not going to happen. Well, uh, the game even, of the, the game of the week, we didn't talk too much about but Detroit and the Colts, uh, D Detroit. and uh, Oh yeah. Well, we'll be talking about that the whole week. That's, so. that's, that's going to be an amazing game. Yep. Now we don't know about the injuries, the Detroit injuries, but the line in that game Oh, let me guess. So Detroit and Buffalo in Detroit. Well, I, think it's, I'll, I, I guess I'm just going to say flat three. Well, I never saw any threes, but. Well, Was it two and a half? Did, originally, I did see a three, but I'm looking at lines anywhere between the Lions one to two now. Wow. So so that, little respect for the Detroit that, Lions. That is that is another horrible number. Yeah, I'd be that, all over but, Detroit there. But you can't give three to the Bills. Oh no, that's that's different. Sure, yeah. I mean, after they lost. I mean, this is this is a well. They played a hell of a game. I mean, they didn't come out. They didn't play well early. Oh, no, their but, defense was terrible. But that almost when they all started game. to play, when they started to play, that was a hell of a game. Well, the refs screwed them late in the game, but that's what you do when you put your when you the, put yourself refs, in a position for the for the, the refs, refs. The refs screw you every week. I mean, yeah, they, they, but you they can't do, do that. Stupid all the time. I mean, that's they all have part. nobody to blame but themselves. They gave up what? How many points they give up? Forty four. Forty four points. I mean that's just terrible. Again, you don't give up forty four points unless you're you're. That just was the not, high. That was the yeah. high, highest total of the year in points forty four forty two. Well, before we wrap up, a little sneak peek on our Playbook ATS podcast show. So Jim's going to get a sneak peek at some of the things he already has a sneak peek at some of the things that I'm going to be uh, reformatting. But this is what I'm going to be talking about as well early in the early in the show. I'm going to talk about the fact that each week, of course, this is a handicapping channel. So each week on that show, I ask for everybody to give their best bets, their 30 second or 60 second uh, short YouTube short best bets. And we also this week, remember, remember we had that teaser deal? Yes. So we basically, this is something that we talked about, you know, we want to kind of give like a teaser each week. So get this. Four. Uh, sh four short picks from four handicappers. Vic had the Bills over 26 and a half. That's a W. Tony had the Bills and Rams over 49 and a half. It's, it's a W. Andy had Boise State 
minus three and a half. That's a W. Jim had Carolina at 13 and a half. That would be a W, right, Jim? Oh, very much so. It's a W. <laughs> That's four for four. And in the teaser, we said, okay, let's get some uh, let's get some teasers out there. And I forget we had like one team. I think it was Minnesota. And said, okay, Minnesota would be this. Team. You, Jim, might, you might have been the one that mentioned them first and said, okay. And we said, okay, we got Minnesota at, in a teaser. There were six, so we make them even. All right, so give us other teams. We got to get some more teams with Minnesota. The teaser teams we had with Minnesota were Miami, winner, Pittsburgh, winner, Tampa Bay, winner. And then Tony and Victor added the LA Rams. Winner, Seattle Seahawks, winner. That, my friend, is called winning everything. That is called 100%, my friend. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually bet that thing. And it, <laughs> it was very – I mean, I didn't bet a lot on it, 200 bucks, but it paid off pretty damn good. The teaser? Yes. There you go. I don't know. I mean, the that's – it's that a crazy the, bet. It's not something I ever recommend to anybody. I that, did have did a five, you take all six I teams? A, I did have a five-team teaser five teams. on my service okay. that I gave out in that one. But this thing had like eight teams. <laughs> it's like not insane. It's one of those crazy, insane things you do for like shopping money. And it just paid. You know? So there you go. It's just one of those things. So I'm going to uh, uh, remind everybody on Wednesday about how great we are here. Uh, <laughs> uh, on Proline TV, and uh, we just, you know, we, we just keep getting better and better. Uh, Spe like fine speaking, wine, right? Speaking of my TV, I got to get that thing behind me fixed because it's not working. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? That's not. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It usually all, is I, working. I can't. I can't get it. I, I got to fix it. All right. So, well, I'll come over later. I'll take care. Okay. Of it. I'll see. You, I'll see you in a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, I'm right. going to, uh, I got to go to the dentist and put a cap on that fell off. Yes. So. And I'll see you, Jim, on Wednesday. See you then. Have a All good right. one. See everybody on Wednesday. Bye-bye.